Transformers and motors. Be, uh, before we get started on transformers and motors, I want to talk a little bit about power generation and how our power is created. It's going to help you understand a little bit better how transformers work and how motors work. Now, it doesn't matter how our power is generated, whether it be wind turbines or um, through a dam that produces electricity or nuclear power. What Basically, what they do, all of these turns a magnetic rotor inside of a generator and we'll look at one here so picture your your wind your wind generator turning this magnet inside the um, stator now when this magnet is turning inside the stator it's creating a magnetic field that ex expands in one direction then contracts and then expands in another direction as that magnetic field cuts through these wires no matter which direction it cuts through it's going to do what's called it inducing a current in this um, these coils of wire and the the more the stronger the magnetic field the more current that is induced and the more wires that are in that magnetic magnetic field the more current is induced as well so just remember a magnetic field that cuts through a coil of wire will induce and cause um, current to flow. So transformers. Let's get on to transformers here. Now, remember I, t I said it was uh, when we generated power, it was done through induction. And you see that transformers have two inductance coils that are wrapped around a magnetic core. Pretty similar to what you saw with the generator over here, where we have one coil wrapped around a magnetic core. With the transformer, we have two. So let's take a look at how that works. So the transformer we see here is has a primary and a secondary coil. The primary coil is what's connected to the incoming power. So that generator that we uh, that we looked at earlier it is creating power by spinning that magnet inside the magnetic core and, and inducing inducing the current to flow through that that coil and wherever it may be it's sent through the transmission lines and wired right into the uh, primary core of the transformer I don't want you to worry about this equivalent resistance right now so we have our rotor that's spinning inside of that magnetic coil inducing current which flows through the transmission wires and it runs this current through this through these coils on the primary side when that when you run current through a magnetic I'm sorry when you run current through a coil of wire it creates a magnetic field so it, it kind of undoes what we did over here at the generator so we took a magnetic field ran it through coils of wire, transmitted that induced electrical current, ran it through another coil of wire, and now we have that magnet magnetic field over here. So what happens is when, as this magnetic field expands and contracts on the, on the iron core, it induces uh, the magnetic field and induces current over here on the secondary coil so this expanding and contracting magnetic field cuts through these wires back and forth and induces a voltage and current over on the secondary coil so that is how a, a transformer works and, and it, so we create once again we take mechanical energy then we rotate a magnet through coils of wire that creates electrical current then we run electrical current through coils of wire that creates magnetism that cuts through other coils of wire that create more current now the reason that we have a transformer though is um, we can't use a hundred and don't want to use 120 volts as control voltage for our HVAC equipment and it, it's much easier and takes much it's much more smaller power requirements and much less expensive controls if we can step it down to 24 volts 
So the very nice thing about transformers is that we can take 120 volts over on the primary coil over here. And if we have for if we have one coil of wire on the secondary side for every five coils of wire on the primary side, it's going to divide the voltage by five. And that's called a step down transformer. And if we have a transformer and it's and it's has a 10 to 1 turn, it's going to reduce the voltage um, by 10. So it would be it would be a 12 volt volt transformer. If it was a 2 to 1 turn, it would be a, a 60 volt transformer. But we in HVAC we use the 5 to 1 turn on the um, primary and secondary coil in a 120 volt system. So what would it be if we had a 240 volt primary coil to get it down to 24 volts, we would need to use a 10 to 1 turn transformer. And that's how that works. Now transformers can only handle so much um, voltage and amperage and transformers are rated in, in VA called VA or volt amp rating. And the way you get volt amp rating is you multiply the voltage times the amperage. And those these are all rated on the um, transformer. So you can see usually it's 40 VA transformer that you see. And the way that you make sure that you don't overload your transformer is most of the control devices in the HVAC system will have a VA rating and a 40 VA transformer um, can only handle 40 VA worth of load before it um, burns out and that's the equivalent of 1.6 amps and that is if you divide um, 24 into 40 is that that's how you get that okay so that is it for transformers um, please review in your book a little bit about the uh, VA ra ratings, a little bit more about that, and we will move on to induction motors, the basic induction motor, and then we'll break down each individual one piece by piece so you, you get a thorough understanding of those.